Hello guys, welcome to a new lesson with me, Michelle. Hey, by the way, I have a doubt. Or should I say, I have a question. Which one do you think is right? Should I say I have a question or I have a doubt? What do you say? Well, if you want to know which one of these is actually the correct usage, then you need to watch the complete lesson with me on Let's Talk. So as I told you, I'm Michelle, let's get started and find out how we can use the word doubt to express our doubts. So let's get started. So here we are guys. Well, I started with a question. What should we say? I have a doubt or I have a question. Don't worry, I'll come to the answer very soon. But before that, let's look at the first phrase that we've got. Doubted. So, what do you think? Is this a verb or a noun or an adjective? So, if you look carefully at the grammar, we have ed at the end of the word. That means that it is an action, right? Like I danced last night, okay? So, this means it's a verb. And we can use the word doubt as a verb as well. So, do you believe in Santa Claus? Well, I don't believe in Santa Claus. I have always doubted the existence of Santa Claus. So here, I'm expressing my doubts by using the word doubt as a verb, and I'm saying, I don't really believe in the existence of Santa Claus. So this is one way of using the word doubt as a verb with an ed. Let's move on and look at the next phrase that we have. Have doubts. Okay, this is something different. Doubts. Okay, so how, why have I added the plural here? Why do I say I have doubts instead of saying doubt? So the idea is whenever you use the word doubt as a noun, you always use the plural. Yes. So whenever you use the word doubt as noun, you always use the plurals. Now, let's look at this question that I started the lesson with. Can I say I have a doubt? Like I just told you, we always used doubt as a noun, as a plural. So ideally, I cannot say that I have a doubt. It's a wrong statement. Maybe you've been using it. I have used it in the past, but now I know that I should not be using it. So what should I say instead? Well, I could say I have a question. Yes, that will be the appropriate usage of the word. And if you want to use the word doubt, please use it as a plural with an S and say, I have my doubts about something, okay? So when you say have doubts, you always have doubts about something. So we use it with about. So if you know a person, okay, who's come to you and you're the employer and they're the employee, they're possibly coming to you for an interview and you think that they won't be able to do the job and you're talking about them to someone else. So you could make a sentence with this phrase. I have my doubts about his ability to do the job. So this is essentially used when you have doubts about someone's ability to do something. So let's go back and look at it again. When we use doubt, we can use it as a verb by adding an ed, but when we use it as a noun, we must add a plural and say, I have my doubts about whatever it could be. Okay, now let's go forward and look at our next phrase, which is in doubt. Okay, are you in doubt about something? Okay, when do we use in doubt? So, in doubt is used when there are some doubts about the success or future of something. For example, if you're talking about a company which is not performing well. So you could say that I'm in doubt about the company's future or the company's future is in doubt. So there's a high possibility that the company might close down in the near future because of its bad yearly revenue. So this is how you can use in doubt when you're talking about a company's future which is in risk. So this is used to express future risk. Okay, 
Let's move forward and look at some more interesting phrases. Room for doubt. Have you ever heard that phrase before? So, we use room for doubt whenever we are talking about a situation which we cannot completely trust. All right. Now, let's look at the internet. We read so many things on the internet. We read so many facts. But do you think all of them are true? Well, I think we should not believe everything we read on the internet because there is a room for doubt, which means that it may not be true every time, okay? So room for doubt means something which is not true always. Something which may not be true. All right, great. Now with that, we move on and look at our next phrase, which is plant a seed of doubt. So sometimes there are situations which look perfectly fine, but then certain things cause you to doubt, okay? You might think, okay, there's something fishy about this situation. That's when someone is planting a seed of doubt. So if you want, maybe want to talk about a couple, okay? And you think that the female might be cheating on her boyfriend. And you say that she appears to be true, but every time she gets calls from this other guy, that plants a seed of doubt, which means it leads you to doubt her. So plant a seed of doubt means to lead someone to doubt you. Fantastic. Now with that, let's look at the next phrase that we have. It's almost like a sentence here. This is, give someone the benefit of the doubt. Have you heard that phrase before? So the benefit of the doubt, well, is it a positive statement or, the negative, or a negative statement? It's actually a positive statement because here you're talking about benefit. And yeah, any sort of benefit is usually positive, isn't it? Some benefit at work, positive, and benefit of doubt is positive as well. Well, what this really means is, whenever a person has a choice to either trust you or not trust you, but fortunately, they decide to trust you, that's when they're giving you the benefit of the doubt. So the other day, I accidentally broke my sister's laptop. And truly, that was an accident. And I told her, like, I broke your laptop and this was purely by accident. So she gave me this harsh look at first, but then she said, hmm, I believe you. I give you the benefit of the doubt, which means I choose to trust you in this situation. So this is how you use this phrase when you have a choice to either trust a person or not trust them, but you choose to trust them. So benefit of the doubt is when you choose to trust someone. Great. Now we have some more positive phrases. We started with some negative phrases. Now we are looking at some more positive phrases towards the end. We have no doubt. This is very clearly when you are very certain or very sure about something. So there is no doubt, okay? No doubt is used when you're very certain. So I have this cousin who's really good at studies and she's just entered college. So she got a great score in her school, in her high school, and she's just entered college. And I have no doubt that she's going to do exceedingly well, which means I'm 100% sure that she's going to do great in college as well, okay? Now, another way of saying the same phrase is by saying without a doubt. Now, this can be used for something you've maybe just tasted. So for example, you have a chocolate cake and it's like the best chocolate cake you've ever had. So you wanna compliment the person who made it. You could tell them, this is by far the best chocolate cake I've ever had without a doubt. So you have no doubts about the fact that this is the best chocolate cake you've ever had. Again, you're very sure, you're very certain. So that's how you can say the phrase no doubt in a slightly different manner. And let's get a little bit more creative and see how we can say the same thing in another manner. This is without a shadow of doubt. Again, as it clearly states, you have no doubts about something. But when would you use this? So I'd say you might use this to describe someone's personality, okay? So 
So let's say you're talking to somebody about a particular guy and you want to describe their personality. And you could say that, I've known him for three years and without a shadow of doubt, he's a really honest guy. So this way, you're describing his personality. So here we are, guys. Thank you so much for sticking with me till the end. You've looked at some phrases that you can make with the word doubt. So indeed, doubt can do much more than what you thought so far. So here we are at the end of the lesson and I want you to subscribe to our channel here and you've got some videos right here. Why don't you go ahead and watch some more, learn some more and come back for more lessons with me. Till then, keep learning English, keep speaking English. Thank you for staying tuned. Take care and have fun. Bye-bye.